Hello, Internet. I am privileged to be in my father's garage, and in this video, I will show you my latest threaded rod suspended garage shelves. Keep watching. Welcome to Scott's Garage. Welcome literally to my garage. If you like some garage time in your off time, if you like do-it-yourself projects, if you like working on your own car, even a project car, if you like organizing your garage, then Scott's Garage is a place for you. All of my do-it-yourself projects begin here in my garage. Welcome to my channel. Now here I'm taking down the old shelves my dad built 18 years ago. He's more of a cobbler. Uh, he repurposes material to, to make things. These shelves are falling apart now though. It's time for new ones. An old friend of the family came over with his wife uh, to say hello. He's also a subscriber to Scott's Garage. So he said, hey Jim, do you want to be a part of the video? Hi, Scott. All right. Hi, everyone. <laughs> we'll see you in the video. I decided we would paint the garage. It's never been painted in 18 years. I'm using a sealer type of paint. Using Dad's 1995 Ford Explorer to pick up supplies from two different locations. Okay, let me show you what I, what I purchased here. Uh, some two by fours, we got these at Home Depot. I'm keeping them the full eight foot length. Uh, these are two by three. They're only sold at Home Depot. And I, I cut off a foot from there. So these are now seven footers. I'll explain why here in a second. Uh, I bought two sheets of OSB 7 16 and I got this at, at Lowe's and I had them um, cut it uh, in half. So uh, 24 inches, um, if you can picture the other side there. Uh, so, so two four by eight, so in, in cut in half, I now have uh, basically uh, four shelves. And, and likewise, I, I lobbed the foot off uh, from it, so now they're, they're seven foot rather than eight foot. I also bought six threaded rods. So these are half inch by 10 foot uh, threaded rods. And I also bought some nuts. It's much cheaper uh, to buy these by the bulk. So there's 25 nuts here for about 11 bucks. Again, these are half inch with uh, 13 count as far as the thread count is concerned. Okay, I, I also purchased some paint and this is my, my favorite uh, cabinet paint. It's uh, cabinet and furniture oil enriched enamel, Velspar. Uh, I got this at Lowe's. And the color that, that I use in all my projects uh, is called rock bottom. It's not a Velspar color, uh, but it is uh, an HG SW1501, and I believe this is Sherwin Williams. It is. So HD TV. It's a really nice color for uh, the garage. Okay, the cabinet paint that has oil in it is still drying on uh, the shorter pieces of two by threes. Uh, the latex that I painted two by fours with is, is, is perfectly dry. So I flipped the boards upside down. I'm gonna take this time while that paint is drying to, to countersink the holes. And how I'm gonna do this is this. I'm using the measurement from the shorter pieces. So the, the, the length of these is 82 and a half. So half of that is 41 and a quarter, which is the, the, the center point. So threaded rods can be one in the center and then one on each end. I don't, I'm gonna put it right to the end and put it in four inches and four inches. Uh, so basically, I, I, I want it against the wall. I want there to be a gap before the shelves start, and I'll explain more about that later. Uh, so I've, I've measured uh, correctly a couple of times, and I have four inches here uh, from, from the end, 41 and a quarter here, and, and likewise here, and then you can see the, you know, where it extends over because it's longer. Um, but what, I, what I've marked here is this. So uh, one of the two by fours is exact center going this way. Uh, and then here it's offset a little bit. And there's a reason for that. This offset one's gonna be closest to the wall and it has to line up perfectly with the two by threes. And then this one will be further out and it doesn't matter. I'll make sure it's centered uh, correctly. Now I, I need to countersink these nuts. And so I'm gonna use this bit uh, I found it in my, my dad's uh, toolbox, so it's it's large enough and it actually will work nicely. Um, so I'll, I'll just uh, drill it down enough uh, to so that the, the nut uh, is countersunk and 
Then I'm gonna drill, uh, use a half inch drill bit so it's nice and tight on the, the boards that it is suspended from. Hey, if you are a subscriber to my channel, you know that I've made several threaded rod suspended shelves in the past. Each time I try to perfect it, this is my own design. In the past, I have secured the corners of what I call the frames and then attached the top part of the shelf and then secured the top part of the shelf to the frame. I'm not going to do it that way this time. So I've put it together, I just pieced it together, but I don't have any screws in the corners yet. And what I'm going to do is, is put the OSB board on top. I'm gonna put uh, two screws um, there, and then I'm going to suck the, the corner together. It, it, I think it will make it a little bit easier to make it uh, square. Uh, I'll do that for each corner, and then I will secure uh, the top with, with many screws. Okay, you can see I have the four shelves now put together. Now this next step is vital in order to line up the shelves correctly in line with the threaded rods. So these are the two by fours that are countersunk that the, these threaded rods are gonna hang down from. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But before I do that, I wanna mark each shelf. So I'm gonna just use the two by four. Uh, this is the, the front edge, so it's centered. This is the back edge, off-centered. Uh, place it on here. Be using a drill bit, a half inch, uh, same size as this, simply to, to, to mark it. Then I'm, I'm gonna use a 5 8 inch drill bit to, to, to finish drilling through. It's a little bit bigger, uh, so as you put the shelves in, it makes it a little bit easier to uh, cinch them up.
Okay, I got all the threaded rod in place on the hangers, and I have two nuts on, on each of these rods on the top. So the one is countersunk, put that view here, uh, countersunk there, and then the other nut is here. I have some thread lock on there as well. And the advantage here is with the both nuts here is that you can really cinch it in tight and you don't want these rods moving once they're in place, uh, like likewise the thread lock. So everything's in place. Now the next thing will be to lift them up in place. Uh, the off-centered one is gonna go right up against the wall. I will find the rafters and secure them into the ceiling. Okay, I have the two by fours, which are acting as hangers in place. I, I use these wood screws. Uh, this is kind of a bent one here, but uh, these are not permanent. Uh, simply use those to make a pilot hole and I'll be replacing all of them now with this more substantial leg bolt. Now the tedious task of adding each shelf to the threaded rods. Okay, here's the final look on these threaded rod suspended garage shelves. I want to point out a few things here as I wrap up the video. First of all, there is a gap of 14 inches between the outside wall and where the shelves begin. That's on purpose. In a previous set of shelves, I received negative criticism from garage door repair people saying, you need at least a foot there or else they're going to charge you more. So again, 14 inches. Um, secondly, it's nice to have a corner to, to stick larger, taller items like weed eaters and shovels or whatever in the corner. So that, that's what I do from here on out. Um, now also there's 20 inches between the floor and the bottom of the, the first shelf. And there's 20 inches then between all the shelves. That's by design. If you buy those common storage containers from Lowe's or Home Depot or Costco, they're typically 18 inches tall. So there's plenty of room for those. These shelves would be ideal for those storage containers. Now, I also noticed that I left more space on the top part. Um, again, you know, for larger items like that, I, I could see like a bed frame or something like that. It's a good space uh, for that. You might be wondering about strength. Now, I am a do-it-yourselfer, I'm not an engineer, but I've made several of these threaded rod suspended garage shelves. And um, I think this is these are very, very strong. I think you could sleep four people here if you had to. Now, in addition to the, simply the strength of the threaded rods that are firmly secured to the, the rafters, by the way, this, this house has uh, an upper loft. It's very well built, and I have no doubt that it, it can handle this weight easily. But in addition to that, I, I put four five-inch uh, screws at, at a slight angle uh, into the, the studs in the wall uh, on this back side, and it just really uh, makes it uh, secure. And in addition, on the very bottom shelf, I sandwiched the shelf, meaning that there is a nut above and below. And that's by design. If ever my dad thought that it was you know, too much weight, uh, you can always shim it up on the bottom end to uh, put some of that weight onto the floor. Hey, I personally got a lot out of this project. It was great helping out my dad. Hope you enjoyed the project as well. If you got any value at all from this video, please give me a like, it costs you nothing, but it's a great value to me. And as usual, have a great day and check out that view.